in the 90s, going to be anchoring and hosting the broadcast today. But I spent much of yesterday in the office shooting a special report that's going to air at the bottom of this hour. By the time you are tuning in to the broadcast, we should also be able to post the report on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com so that you can send it on uh, to warn your friends, your family, your neighbors, and others. The dire straits this country and the rest of the planet is in is unprecedented in our history. I don't think anybody can deny that. It's a prima facie fact on its face. We are in the midst of a global transformation from once quasi-free societies to scientific tyrannies. The globalists are dismantling every form of basic human liberty and in its place installing a technocracy. Even well-meaning liberals that I know, when they read the New York Times or look at CNN.com and see, no exaggeration, 60, 70, 80 articles about Trump, and every single one of them is anti-Trump, totally hateful, all the rules of objective journalism drop by the wayside, uh, it shakes them to their core. And more and more of them are saying, my God, he must be good if this big establishment we've always known to be corrupt is so against him. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, the United States is in the final phases of being turned over to multinational corporations. We have been conquered. And Donald Trump is trying to block that. That's why they're panicking. That's why they are going after him with everything they've got. The only risk in Trump is that he could be a super predator who has been planning this for decades and who is coming in to steal the New World Order main command base, the United States, from them. I don't believe that's the case, and the evidence doesn't show that. But regardless, that is the only downside. When he says, what do you have to lose voting for me, he's absolutely on target. Because you have nothing to lose. Because he is the anti-globalist. We know what we get with Hillary Clinton. And we've never seen all these foreign leaders and the communist Chinese and the Pope and everybody else coming out against someone anywhere close to this. Their panic is real and palpable. Now, the special report coming up at the bottom of the hour is undoubtedly the most important I've ever issued. And undoubtedly, I will issue more in the near future that are even more important than that because we're entering this quickening phase. And it deals with the fact that I have become too comfortable with living next to evil. I have become acclimated to it to a great extent. I've become punch drunk. Sitting back this weekend thinking about what a on record war criminal mass murderer Hillary Clinton is, and the fact that she's saying I have a dark heart and going after me in the national press really hit home just how much danger I'm in and just how much danger you're in. These megalomaniacs have already brought us to war. They're bringing us to the brink of a new global war. And so we put on the evidence in this special report coming up at the bottom of the hour that she is a bloodthirsty monster who revels in those that she's killed, uh, that she is a, 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 a grasping person completely turned over to evil, and that she has giant throngs of domesticated zombies that basically serve her every beck and call like she's the queen bee or the queen ant. And that the reason I'm standing up against her so boldly and taking her on at the risk of my name, my life, my treasure, my family, uh, is because there is no future very soon uh, if this paradigm of evil is allowed to continue to expand. My very instincts, my very spirit, my very guts demand that I stand up against Hillary in the New World Order. And that's why I'm doing this today. That's why I'm taking action. And that's why I'm asking you to pray for InfoWars and myself, but to also pray for peace and pray for the light of truth to come into the world with more and more of these WikiLeaks and other information. Uh, we're seeing Google censoring the WikiLeaks. We're seeing Google censor the DC links. We're seeing DC links being taken down to try to stop you from knowing what George Soros and Hillary are up to. But the truth is, nothing will stop the signal. Nothing will stop the truth from coming out. We'll be right back with David Knight. And again, I'm David Knight here live in Austin. We're going to have more reports from Alex Jones as well as news coming right up. Stay with us. It is Sunday, the 28th day of August 2016. I'm Alex Jones, your host. I'm about to hand the baton to David Knight in 60 seconds. But first, I want to remind you that an extremely important report 
is going to premiere here that will detail exactly where this country stands right now. Hillary Clinton represents a worldwide criminal combine that describes itself as the New World Order. It is establishing a global corporate government where they are above the law, tax-exempt, with diplomatic immunity. And what we're seeing with Hillary being above the law with the emails and above the law uh, with all the new WikiLeaks information that's coming out and her long history is part of an admitted plan to set the precedent that the, that the elites can basically get away with bloody murder and do whatever they want, whenever they want. And the fact is the Clinton death toll and the Clinton death count is well known the last 30 years. And it's only getting more intense now. And Google and others are in the news censoring the search for the Clinton death list, the Clinton death count. We're even seeing other forms of political suppression and persecution, like Dr. Drew getting fired from CNN less than a week after he talked about Hillary uh, and her medical records looking like her doctors are doing a terrible job uh, and that he would like to help her uh, because the medications her records say that she's on absolutely are incredibly dangerous to be taking together and nothing makes sense. He was fired. All the other censorship, the staffers being killed, Google censoring WikiLeaks searches, it goes on and on and on. They are hiding so much. And with her coming out and this last week and saying that I'm this horrible, evil person that has this dark heart, it is amazingly creepy. It doesn't scare me. It makes me want to work ten times harder. But to see this incredible war criminal up there talking about my dark heart, it's clearly a threat. And to then have Kimmel and others sit there and wave a gun around on TV and say this is a threat, you know, from the New World Order to you, Alex Jones, they know it's seen as a comic relief by their viewers, but it's not comic relief um, because it's being directed by the Clintons. Just like they're directing the mainstream media, they're directing these propaganda offenses we see uh, every night during late night comedy. That's been admitted. And they think they can intimidate everyone. She thinks that she's a bully and that everybody's going to back down to her because she threatens them. I know she's dangerous. I know her controllers and the people she represents have had people killed. It said the Clintons don't kill people, but people that get in the way of the Clintons die because of the interests they represent. That's absolutely true. I want to state it on record. I'm doing this because I care about my family. I care about the future of this country. I'm doing this because somebody has got to stand up against evil. And when you don't stand up against it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more out of control like it's now done. And so understand something, Hillary. If anything happens to me, you and your controllers are the prime suspects. And I know now you think you're above the law, so why do you care? Maybe you want to send a message by getting rid of old Alex Jones. Bottom line, everybody knows it's a serious issue and that the Clintons have the thinnest skin in politics. So I want you and your controllers to understand that I am conscious of this and of doing this because I'm the opposite of people like you. I'm not a parasite, I'm not a bully, I'm not a coward, and I can't sit back and watch you dismantle this nation, go after our Second Amendment, and bring us into a world government, and put Obamacare on people's backs that absolutely bankrupts them and is designed to make this nation nothing but a bunch of part-time workers that can only dream of a better future through government. Somebody, just like our ancestors did, standing up against King George, has to stand up against you. I'm going to hand the baton to David Knight, broadcasting from the Infowars.com News Center in Austin, Texas. All right, and that was Alex Jones. We're going to have that report that he's putting together. We're going to have that in the second hour. Make sure that you stay tuned for that report. You know, it is uh, August the 28th, 2016. That is 268 days since Hillary Clinton has had a press conference. I think we need to do something like Ted Koppel did with the, uh, uh, what was it, he had the Nightline uh, show years and years ago. If you remember, uh, if you're old enough, what happened was the Iranians took the American embassy hostage. And so they did a special report to talk about it that night. They came back the next night. This is night number two of the Iranian hostage situation. They kept going and kept going and kept going. Finally, when it was nearly a year or a little over a year, I forget how long uh, they were there, sorry, but the, the, however long it took, they had been doing this special report leading off their news every night talking about the Iranian hostage situation that was never resolved. They did that for so long that they kept the program with Ted Koppel, called it Nightline. You know what we need to do? We need to start the program, I think, every day 
Instead of the uh, Star Wars theme song, we need to come in with the Nightline theme song from uh, 30, 40 years ago. And we need to uh, say how many days Hillary has held America hostage, kept us in the dark because she's running away from questions. She hasn't taken questions from the press in an open give and take. It's been prepared, uh, scripted. Uh, engagements with the press or with her podcast and she hasn't done that since December the 5th and so we need to call her on that we need to call her on that every day you know we had some people just this last week uh, she was at an event and the the press was very timid gathered around here with her cameras they were afraid to engage her to talk to her she's sitting there somebody's offering her chocolate finally somebody has the temerity to ask her a question and she just looks at them and says have some chocolate you know as I said on Friday it's kind of like a uh, uh, Forrest Gump, you know, uh, a press conference is like a box of chocolates. You never really know what you're going to get. So <laughs> what Hillary took away from that is to run, Hillary, run. Run away from the questions and just make sure if you're a reporter that she doesn't offer you some Turkish delights from her supporter, Fatala Gulen. If you know what I'm talking about with uh, Narnia, you know what I'm talking about uh, with Hillary Clinton. We're also going to talk in this segment, we're going to talk about uh, Bleach Bit. You know, we've had this come out. It, it wasn't just a mistake. This was deliberate. It was industrialized uh, destruction of evidence. And that's what Trey Gowdy's been talking about. We're going to talk a little bit about that, as well as Trump's comments that the NSA, he thinks, has those 30,000 some odd emails, 33,000, I believe. We're also going to talk about his tax return. Should Trump release his tax return? There's some different opinions on that. Uh, Roger Stone says, yes, he should. His son, Eric Trump, said it would be foolish for my dad to release tax returns. We're going to talk about that as well. And we're also going to play for you Nigel Farage. You know, he had a great stump speech in Mississippi introducing Donald Trump, who he believes has potential to be Reagan 2.0. I think that's true. And I want you to hear a good part of the Nigel Farage speech because he really lays out what the issues are there, as well as pointing out to people that they were told right up to the very end they were way behind in the polls for Brexit. But people showed up anyway. They want to discourage you. They want to set the expectations for how they're going to uh, stuff the ballots or how they're going to flip the electronic voting machines. All of that is an issue. But I believe that if we show up in mass, in a massive number, just like they did in Brexit, if we show up uh, with numbers too large for them to credibly put this back, or even to the extent if they look at it and say, well, you know what, we've got so many people here, I think they're going to call BS on this. If we flip these uh, election returns to that degree, we may have to deal with this in a different way and let it go through. And of course, as he's looking at Brexit, he's saying, uh, look, if this hasn't happened by a certain time, and he talks about the things that he wants to see happen with Brexit, if these guys that are now in power, I should say uh, the, the lady who's now in power, Theresa May, if she's going to sit on this, if she's going to shut this down, then they're going to have something to say about it. And, of course, we will as well. I want to take a quick look at some of the breaking news articles because, as Alex Jones is talking about the way that uh, we've seen Hillary operate for the longest period of time, it's not just Hillary. It is also the upper echelons of the Republican establishment. You know, we've got Paul Wolfowitz, the guy who was, as many people said, the architect of the Iraq war. The guy who I would say can't find Osama bin Laden on a map. <laughs> he wasn't in Iraq, okay? Nevertheless, he says, well, I wasn't the architect. If I'd been the architect, I would have done it differently. Okay, fine, fine. You want to say that you would have done this little thing. The issue is, should you have started that war? Should Hillary have started the war and the overthrow of Gaddafi and Libya? Are we better off when they did that? And of course, the emails have come out and we've seen that Hillary started that war in Libya because they were concerned, one of their chief concerns was the idea that they would have competition against the central bank's fiat currency. Gaddafi was going to set up a currency backed in gold and go against the petrodollar. We can now see that as a fact. We told you that then, and now we can see it in the email. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here live on this 268th day since Hillary Clinton has had a press conference. We're going to go back to the news here and cover some uh, breaking news stories. Before I do, I want to remind you that we have a new product, BioTrue Selenium. And, of course, we're offering a package with the BioTrue Selenium as well as the X2 nascent iodine together because both of those help support thyroid health. But 
I've taken selenium for a very long time. It goes back uh, several decades to when my uncle alerted me to it. Both my uncle and my dad at the time had prostate cancer. And as my uncle was doing research and uh, looking into things that he could do, he was telling me about selenium. And if you recall on the day that we launched this, we had Dr. Group talking about the many, many studies. You can look this up for yourself. Look at various types of cancer, how they have uh, done studies, people who had uh, selenium supplementation and didn't have a deficiency of selenium, they had anywhere from a 40 to 60% less risk of cancer. So it's one of the things that you can do along with exercise and other diets, but to have the right kind of nutrients because selenium works with other nutrients in your body to help keep your uh, metabol metabolism uh, strong as well as your immune system to help you to fight cancer. So I've been taking this for decades and I'm very excited to have a pure form of this that is 100% uh, organic. Because a lot of times when you take these trace minerals, they have to dig them out of the ground, and you always have to worry about, well, are there some other heavy metals uh, that are attached to this that I don't want to get? One of the things I like about the BioTrue Selenium is that they get it out of pressing mustard seeds that are 100% organic. So you don't have to worry about any heavy metal trace elements in this source of selenium. You always want to make sure you've got good quality supplements after you've looked at the type of supplements that you believe uh, will help you with your health. So that's one of the things that I'm really excited about, to know that I've got a good 100% organic source of this that I can trust, and I do trust Dr. Group. He does his research. He really understands what's going on with it. So that is a new product, BioTrue Selenium, as well as a package there with X2 nascent iodine. Take a look at that at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, as we're going to break, I started to talk about Paul Wolfowitz, and, of course, he was one of the people who uh, pushed us into the Iraq War. And he is calling Trump dangerous. <laughs> this guy who pushed us into the Iraq War is calling Trump dangerous. How many people died? How many people were maimed, both Americans and Iraqis, over the lies that were pushed to us by the Bush administration? How many people? Does that make somebody dangerous? And of course, Hillary Clinton supported that war, voted for that war, pushed us into that war. Uh, it, Donald Trump, at first, when they asked him about that, he goes, well, yeah, I guess so. But then within six months, he said, you know, this isn't a good idea. And people realized very quickly that we had been lied to, but they kept it going. The whole idea that Wolfowitz and these other dangerous neocons are pushing is this idea of nation building. But of course, in order to build a nation like they would like to have, they have to first destroy a nation. That's the problem, one of the many problems with their nation building. And you know, after you go in and destroy somebody's country, they're not usually too receptive to your suggestions about how you ought to rebuild it. And that's going to work that way here in America as well. We see what you're doing here in America. We really do. I want to say to the globalist elitists in both parties, we really do understand your plan for destruction. And we're not going to let you do it if we can uh, stop that. But if you do it, we're not going to be very receptive to your plans on how you want to rebuild it either. You know, that, that's the key thing. Wolfowitz says, well, you know, it's complicated for me to come out against Trump. But, you know, Trump says that our policies are responsible for the mess that we've got in Iraq. And it's like, yeah, that's right. And it's that speaking truth to power that Donald Trump has done that has endeared him to so many people, criticizing their insane nation-building policies. And you know what? When I see the Republican elitists uh, saying, I'm with her, especially people like Paul Wolfowitz, it sounds more and more like I'm with war. Because you know what? They really are. And this is also an amazing article that uh, Drudge had up today from the New York Post. Huma Abedin's mom has been linked to some shocking anti-women statements as well as an anti-woman book. And who would have thought? Who would have thought this lady who has been involved with the Muslim Brotherhood, who has been involved with so many different organizations, to push Sharia law? And, of course, her daughter is the person who is closest to Hillary Clinton. We'll just leave it at that. OK, we won't probe the full depths of their relationship here, but certainly she is a let's call it close assistant to Hillary Clinton. And yet these people here, here it's Hillary Clinton basing her entire campaign on the fact that she's a woman, that this would be a step forward for women. And yet she has these people pushing Sharia law, which is the most anti feminist thing you can find on the planet. OK, she's got people like the Sharia lawyer who criticized Donald Trump that she chose to speak before she accepted the nomination. 
One of the reasons, of course, she didn't want to be upstaged by anybody like the president or the vice president. Uh, so she made sure that uh, there weren't any big time politicians speaking on the night that she took her nomination because she really isn't that good a speaker. Uh, she really doesn't think on her feet. She doesn't want to take questions from the press, as pointed out. 268 days and counting since Hillary Clinton uh, took any questions from the press. But as the New York Post, Post points out, uh, while she was Secretary of State, she went to Saudi Arabia to an Islamic girls' school here in this Wahhabist state that we support. And, you know, we talk about ISIS and the caliphate that they want to set up. Remember, when we talk about this, that Saudi Arabia has executed more people than ISIS has. Okay, and they continue to do it at a higher rate in terms of beheadings and so forth. And why do they do this? Okay, they've got lashings and stonings for adulterous women. That's what uh, Huma's mother was uh, promoting in these books. Even the circumcision of girls, okay? This is what her mother is promoting in both the magazine that they had as well as the books that she's promoting. And, of course, the Sharia lawyer who had a son who was killed in uh, Iraq this is a guy who himself has talked about many Sharia books and how this is the path to, uh, to justice and to human rights. Nothing could be further from the truth. In 1999, Huma's mother, Saleha, translated and edited a book titled Women in Islam, A Discourse in Rights and Obligations. Uh, no, actually... You, want, you, want, you don't even have the right in Saudi Arabia where she's teaching as a woman. You don't even have a right to drive a car. So they have this, and we've reported on this multiple times, they have a park that opens up just to women one night of the week where they can go in, dress normally without the burqas and that sort of thing, and drive bumper cars. Not real cars, bumper cars. Okay, and they can uh, eat whatever they want. They can uh, take a look at movies because there's no men allowed that night. Okay, that's how repressive this institution is. And yet, listen to what Hillary did. Okay, this is Huma's mother translating for everybody so that we uh, get the gist of it. Yeah, there you go. There's the picture of them in the bumper cars and their burkas, the burka pumpers. Okay, uh, but she publishes this book and edits it. And the book explains how the stoning and lashing of adulterers, the killing of apostates, sexual submissiveness to their husbands, and even female gen uh, genital mutilation are all permiss permissible practices under Sharia law, and actually they advocate that, okay? And Clinton, after this is published, goes to Saudi Arabia in 2010 and says, Americans have to stop stereotyping Saudi women as oppressed. And don't assume all American women go to the beach in a bikini. That's Hillary Clinton's phrase right there. We'll stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host on this 268th day since Hillary Clinton has had a press conference. We were just talking, though, about the fact that she was able to go to Saudi Arabia and address an all-girls Muslim school that was founded by Huma Abedin's mother promoting Sharia law. And when she went there, she said to them, uh, all American women don't go around in bikinis. And you know what? If they get their way, nobody is, okay? American women are going to be going around with a hood over their head, or they're going to get a beating like they do in Saudi Arabia from the religious police. Understand that this woman who says that she is the epitome of feminist achievement is sucking up to these people pushing the most repressive regimes against the very groups that she is pandering to in the United States, her core constituency. She likes to divide the population into black versus white, into women versus men. Okay, and then she talks about, she stands there for the LGB, LGBT crowd, and yet she promotes a system of law where they're thrown off the roof, where they're executed. That's what she's doing here. She's going to the very people who promote Sharia law. She's got Sharia Khan, the lawyer, speaking for her on the night she gets the nomination. And, of course, if Hillary Clinton gets her way, she is going to create a war here. You know, we're seeing this in Europe. We see that um, Angela Merkel, who really is a harbinger of what Hillary Clinton is going to do to this country if we let her. We've got this article today from Breitbart. One million Muslim migrants under just the first term of a Hillary presidency. And this is an analysis from the Center for Immigration Studies that Breitbart picks up. They explain the large expansion of Muslim migration will be part of a massive increase in overall immigration. 
that she has promoted. They say this is on top of the millions of illegal immigrants to whom she would grant immediate amnesty. She said she would do that within the first 100 days. She would grant amnesty to 11 million people. They point out in this analysis, if you read the article, they say Clinton could add 10 million new immigrants to the U.S. during her first term alone. In addition to the 11 million immigrants, she has said she will give amnesty to in the first 100 days. And they point this out. They say, absent the kind of change in policy that Donald Trump is talking about, it seems likely that under the existing system that 600,000 new migrants from the Muslim world would settle in the U.S. in the next four years. On top of that, Secretary Clinton has indicated she would like to take in 65,000 refugees from Syria next year. Now, understand, this is as Barack Obama has just brought in 10,000 Syrian refugees this year. To date, he's going to do more. But she wants to do six and a half times that. Okay, and at the last day of Ramadan, current Secretary of State John Kerry addressed some Muslims and was bragging about the fact that they had brought in six times the number of Syrian refugees that they had the preceding year. So every year, we're going to increase it by 600%. This is a country where we started a war, where we're supplying both sides of this, where we're creating massive destruction and hatred, and then bringing the people over here to do something about it. See, that's the way they're trying to destroy our country. That's what they're doing in Europe. But I want to, I started talking about this on Friday, and I ran out of time. There's a great article from Politico, and it was a firsthand account of an Asian journalist who was at one of these Black Lives Matter riots. And I don't call it a protest. I call it a riot, because that's what this has turned into. And he said... Um, he had a community activist that uh, he had asked an interview, uh, and he, the community activist called him over and said, uh, I can see from your face that you don't think you're safe, he told me. Now, this guy was black, he said, and he's Chinese-American. But he says, uh, you are. You're a minority, too, so you're safe here. But then he found out that he really wasn't safe, okay? His, the photographer who was with him was white. And that's a crime in Hillary and Obama's America, that's a crime to be white if you're working with, uh, if you're at a Black Lives Matter uh, rally, uh, protest, riot is really the appropriate word. Because what happened soon, they had, uh, he said, shoving and rock throwing escalated into smashing cars and setting businesses on fire by night. He said, I was crouching behind a Chevy Suburban to avoid bullets. Okay. And another intern that was with him was a white man. He said, who arrived later on to take photos. He said, he huddled beside me. Said after the gunfire ceased, he got out from behind the car to take more pictures while the writer stayed behind. Then he soon heard, get your white ass out of here, okay? Said after trying unsuccessfully to defuse the situation, my colleague was flying down the street with a group of men chasing him. He said, I wanted to help, but I didn't know how, so I decided to run after them. He said, in order to run faster, my colleague dropped the two bulky cameras that were hanging around his neck when I tried to retrieve them and yelled at him to get out of the area. Some of the group of rioters started chasing me. He says, I wasn't surprised when they caught me. Then they threw me to the ground. I reflexively curled up into a ball. Blows began landing on my back, my head, and my torso until somebody yells out, stop. He's not white. He's Asian. He gets a pass. Obama is America. Hillary is America. This is what the race war will look like, folks, where you were hunted down because of your skin color. Now, people were hunted down in Libya because of their skin color. In the war that Hillary Clinton started, she was warned that that was happening, that that was continuing, that that was escalating, and she chose to do nothing about that in Libya. And of course, the skin color was identified as people who were foreigners because so, uh, Gaddafi had tried to help sub-Saharan Africa. He tried to get them independent of the neo-colonialists. And I say neo, you know what? They never stopped colonialism. <laughs> it's still, the you know, they were appealing to the French. They said, yeah, we can get the French on our side because the French don't want to lose their influence in the area. They don't want to see uh, Gaddafi take away our fiat currencies and hurt our central banks that don't have anything backing them. He's putting out a, a gold-backed currency that is going to denominate oil sales, and we can't have that. Tell the French that. They're going to join with us. That's what Sidney Blumenthal was uh, telling Hillary Clinton. Uh, just, just go with this, and uh, we can get the French to work with us because they don't want to see this happen. They want to maintain their colonial influence.
And so what was happening in Libya was they would identify these quote unquote foreigners and shoot them on sight. Shoot them on sight because they would shoot them because they're black. Here, you're chased down and beaten uh, severely unless they discover that, oh, he's not white, he's Asian. And he said, that voice struck in my head, stuck in my head over the next few days as I talked to relatives and friends about it. It belonged to a woman who'd come up to me in the afternoon scrum and said, you're Asian, right? Why are you even here? And he said, well, the answer was obvious. I'm a journalist. Okay. But uh, <laughs> this is Hillary's America. This is where these people want to go. This is the pattern of hatred, of chaos that people like Hillary Clinton and George Soros and others want to create in this country. We can see how it's happening already in Europe. As I said before, it is a harbinger of what they're going to do here in America if they're allowed to continue these policies. And um, we have to understand this is the tactic of globalism. They want to do nation building here in the United States. They want to do nation building in Europe as well. Of course, they're not going to, to uh, have a quote unquote nation. They hate borders. They think borders are horrible. They want to erase them. But no, the nation that they're going to build is actually a global governance that they're working to build. And in order to do that, they have to destroy our countries. And we're trying to get people to understand the method that they're going to use. It's the open borders. It's the multinational corporate trade agreements that they have put together. And I would include in that and have in the past the climate trade agreements that are put together by the multinational corporations who are going to be benefiting from these carbon taxes, these carbon credits with the panic that they've sown amongst the people. Now, when we look at the corruption, and I've got a couple of things here on Trump that I want to play in the next segment. We're going to play for you uh, what Trump had to say about emails. He said, you know what? I think the NSA has those emails. And I've been saying for a long time that I don't think it's the Russians. I think it's people in the NSA. We've had William Biddy say that. He thinks that they've got the emails. Uh, he would know. He was the head technical person for the NSA for decades. So he would know that they have those emails. But I think they're also deathly afraid of Hillary Clinton exposing them and getting them killed. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, August 28, 2016. 268 days since Hillary Clinton has talked to the press okay so we're going to keep hammering that home until she starts to answer some questions and she's got a lot to answer for before we get to what donald trump said about emails i want to remind you that we have a new product bio true selenium that we're now offering at infowarslife.com very important uh, antioxidant for you to have it is something that you have in trace amounts in your body but you do need those trace amounts to help the other parts uh, function properly it is a powerful antioxidant. It fights free radicals that damage cells that lead to premature aging, but it also helps to support the immune system naturally. Now, it is never synthetic in our version. That's the problem. Most of the versions that you'll get are either synthetic or they're coming out of a uh, mineral situation where there might be some uh, heavy metals associated with them. Not so with InfoWars BioTrue. It is pressed out of 100% organic mustard seed. It offers an excellent vegan-friendly source of selenium and other nutrients. In fact, it is. it even offers cofactors and co-nutrients that you'll get out of the mustard seed. So instead of getting some heavy metals along with a mineral, you will get actually some cofactors and co-nutrients out of the mustard seeds that they press it out of. Again, a 100% organic source of selenium, a vital mineral for you to have uh, to protect your health, the health of your family. Donald Trump had some comments about emails, and I went to that with the uh, break, talking about what he had had to say. Uh, let's play the clip of Donald Trump and uh, what he thinks is going on with the emails and the new revelations about how Hillary wiped her server. Here's uh, Donald Trump. Uh, when she deleted 33,000 emails, those emails had some really bad stuff on them, because look at the ones that they found, and these are probably a lot worse. And then not only did they delete them, they used a method of deletion that you can never get them back. You saw that yesterday yes. for the first time. So she knew what she was deleting. It's a criminal act. She knew exactly what she was deleting. And, and using that kind of extensive, uh, you know, bleaching technique, et cetera, shows a consciousness of guilt, we would argue, well, it's very as a expensive. prosecutor. Yeah. It's very expensive. Probably, uh, I don't know, foolproof. I, I don't know. I hear the NSA maybe has uh, the emails. A lot of people say NSA would have the emails if they really wanted to get them. But... 
obviously they don't want to get him. They're protecting her. They're coddling her. And it's the only way she can even consider running. I mean, she shouldn't be allowed to run. But to use that method of getting rid of, uh, permanently rid of emails mm -hmm. that most people never even heard of, even sophisticated people never heard of it. Yeah, even sophisticated people have never heard of it. You understand what's going on when you delete stuff, okay? Well, let's talk a little bit about the technical aspects about it, because you've got the tech company that uh, has now come out that she used are bragging about the fact that they blocked the FBI from investigating Hillary Clinton. Okay, maybe that's a point of honor for them. <laughs> uh, how did she do this, and why would she do this? Look, it goes to intent, now, remember that when uh, FBI Director Comey said there wasn't any criminal intent, okay, this was not done accidentally. This was done very deliberately and done in a way to prevent recovery. Understand that when you accidentally erase something, let's say you take something and you throw it in the trash and then you empty your trash. What happens on the computer is that it doesn't actually erase the data. What it does is it erases the directory to where the data is. When you store something on a disk, usually it gets fragmented into different segments, and the directory is actually a series of pointers. So it points to the first part of your data, then that data points to the next segment and where that's located on the disk and so forth. So when you erase these files, you can buy a lot of programs out there right off the shelf, Then, and maybe you need to know this in case you accidentally delete something. If it's a text file, like these emails, it's pretty easy to recover it. What they do, uh, these recovery programs will actually look at the data and build the chain backwards, okay, to reconstruct the directory. And they can get that information uh, off of the disk because it's still there. With programs that eradicate the, uh, the data, and I believe this is the way, I haven't looked at Bleach Bit specifically, but I know how these... Uh, uh, shredder programs will work as they will go out and actually write over the disk. It's a very time consuming process. It takes a long time to do that. You can delete stuff. As you know, you can delete your files very quickly. But if you really want to take the stuff out and eradicate it completely, you have to sit there and write a series of just rewrite the disk, the entire disk. It is a very, very long process. So it is something that has to be done deliberately. It is something that is very, very time-consuming. And, of course, as they uh, brag, they, they stifle the investigation from Hillary Clinton. Zero Hedge pointed this out. They said, uh, as Trey Gowdy revealed that Hillary Clinton had used a software program called BleachBit to wipe her servers, Trey Gowdy said, you don't use this for your yoga emails, okay? She likes to tell people those 33,000 33, emails that she got rid of, that was just personal business, you know, kind of like uh, her yoga routines and her daughter's wedding plans and so forth. Uh, it's hard to believe there were that many emails about that kind of information, and yet they deliberately overwrote this stuff. He says, when you're using BleachBet, it's something you do because you don't want anybody else to see it, just as I just explained. You know, she says she's uh, wiped it like with a cloth or something, you know. No, it was really more like uh, the way she bleaches her hair, okay, <laughs> to completely eradicate what was there. So they can't see that. BleachBet points out that they're receiving overwhelming interest from folks who are looking to permanently erase yoga and bridesmaids' emails and or other similar incriminating information, okay. Meanwhile... We see them pushing back, and it's interesting that as D.C. Leaks went down, this is an article that we've got at Infowars.com from the Daily Caller, D.C. Leaks' website went down this weekend. Their Twitter account was suspended. These are the people who published the information about George Soros and others. Uh, you can see, oh, at least you could see before when they had that information up, uh, you could go through various emails. You could see how he was plotting to get the LGBT people in Italy, for example, angry at their national government and embracing the European Union because they said, hey, the European Union is friendlier to LGBT, so therefore let's eradicate the Italian state, okay? That's the way George Soros plays. And there was a lot of very interesting uh, things that came out of that, along with the $650,000 that you saw him contributing to Black Lives Matter to create uh, chaos and a race war here in America. But the people who put that out, DC Leaks, their website was taken down, their Twitter account was suspended, they got their website back up. But interestingly enough, the Soros section uh, was down yesterday when this article went up, and it is still down as of early this afternoon when I checked. Meanwhile, uh, the DNC chair, Donna Brazil, longtime Clinton crony, says, we are victims of a cybercrime led by thugs. 
Now, she says we're victims of cybercrime, and she uses the term thugs. And we got in trouble when we said that about people who are burning down buildings. But, of course, if you're going to uh, burn down your data and do these other things, that's one of the things Trey Gowdy said. You know, she said there's uh, a lot of smoke but no fire. He goes, no, it's really more like arson that you can see going on there. Donna Brazil said, the notion that we're going to let some person put out personal sensitive information across the world jeopardizing people's privacy, and we're interviewing him as if uh, he's going to have a smoking gun. Since when do they care about people's privacy? These people who keep everything dark, hidden, and secretive, okay? It's people like the Clintons and the Bushes who have created WikiLeaks. So you know what, Donna Brazil, if you don't like WikiLeaks, you got nobody to blame but yourself. WikiLeaks and Julian Assange are there. Why? Because you treat everything as a deep, dark secret. Hillary Clinton talked about the dark corners of the web. No, what is dark and what has gone dark is government, specifically the federal government. Everything is hidden, for the most part, because you want to create crimes. You want to cover up your criminal activities. That's why you hide everything. That's why you treat everything as if it's national security, unless it actually is national security. And then you put it on your own private server because you're more concerned about concealing your own private Machiavellian dealings than you are concerned about people's lives that are at risk. People that are part of the NSA who are doing something real. That's the way they have perverted this. Demanding to know every detail of the people's lives but denying that we have a right to know anything about them. As we pointed out last week when she said, there's a lot of smoke, but there's no fire. Remember, it was just a couple of months ago we learned from Huma Abedin's emails and from testimony with Judicial Watch uh, taking her testimony, we learned that Hillary Clinton was putting her schedule in the burn bag. And we had a guy who'd worked for multiple administrations, who had been a U.N. ambassador uh, from the U.S., as well as working for many secretaries of state. He said that by law, was supposed to be public information, the Secretary of State. And yet Hillary Clinton is putting that in her burn bag. What has she got to hide? Nothing but her criminal activity. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. We're going to have a special report from Alex Jones coming up in the next hour. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We're going to have a special report from Alex Jones in this hour. We're also going to be playing for you some excerpts from the speech that Nigel Farage gave in Mississippi, a great speech laying out the principles that we're looking at here. Because you know what happened in Britain with Brexit? One of the reasons that uh, we were so excited about uh, the Brits taking back their control of their economy is because that truly is the issue. This is a global fight. And we have to look at this and understand that this is a global issue. And we have to act at the national level to make sure that we still have nations that we still have a government that we have some say in. It was Nigel Farage, of course, that uh, we had played the speeches where he was calling out the EU, saying, uh, who, who made you the people who could take out a democratically elected government in Italy and Greece and put in unelected bankers from Goldman Sachs? He called him out on that. He said uh, in his last speech to the European Parliament, he said, uh, a number of years ago, I came here and I told you a lot that I was going to uh, get Britain out of the European Union and, Union, and you all laughed. And he said, who's laughing now? And of course, uh, that is the key issue. Are we going to have our country, our economy controlled by people who are not even in the country, by globalists who are not answerable to the people? That is truly what is happening, and what is at stake with the transatlantic, with the trans-Pacific partnerships? These deals that were written by multinational corporations and their lobbyists without the input of our elected representatives. As a matter of fact, our elected representatives were not allowed to see it until it was completed. They were not allowed to talk about it. They're not going to be allowed to uh, do any kind of amendment to it or have any kind of a debate or have any say-so as to whether or not it's going to come up for a vote. Once they want to pull this up for a vote... It's going to be brought to the floor. They have already passed a law, the Trade Promotion Authority, which subverts the whole constitutional process of passing a treaty. A treaty is supposed to be passed in a certain way. It's supposed to be passed by the Senate with a two-thirds majority. They don't have those votes in the Senate. So what they decide to do is they would have a simple majority in both houses. 
that they would shut down any filibusters, that they would shut down any amendment, that they would shut down any debate after they shut out our elected representatives in terms of creating this. And it's not simply an economic issue. It's not simply about jobs. It has so many different aspects. It controls, it, has, it affects our internet freedom. It has controls there for the internet. It has controls that would uh, shut people down from putting blocks up against uh, GMOs or other things that they're concerned about in their country because our economies are not going to be managed by the countries. They're going to be managed by a group of unelected people. And once we pass this, that committee will be able to include any other country like China. We're told that this is a move to protect ourselves against China. Not true. China can be added very easily by this commission, just as they can change every one of the uh, aspects of the, uh, of the trade partnerships, as they call it. They're actually treaties. Those treaties would then be living documents, as Jeff Sessions has pointed out. So this is an issue, just like Brexit, where the European Union was telling British fishermen who had fished for generations, for centuries, in their own waters, saying, sorry, you can't fish there, and you're not going to have any say as to the level of fishing that is going to happen in those waters. We're going to be the ones who decide that. We're not isolationists. We simply want to control our own destiny. We have a right to do that. So when we look at this and we look at these other issues, that is really what is before. So we're going to play uh, Nigel Farage's speech and just real quickly before we go to break. This is an example of the corruption that we have in this country. Always the whistleblowers are the ones who are attacked when they expose wrongdoing. Here is an article from the Daily Caller. L.A. VA hospital lost 30 cars. Guess who got in trouble? The guy who reported it. Okay, they lost 30 out of 88 vehicles and official credit cards. And instead of the guys who lost it going to jail or getting in trouble, the guy who reported it got fired. Even though they had people that didn't get fired who had bracelets on them because they'd been involved in armed robbery. They were still having them come to the VA. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We're going to have Alex joining us with a special report at the bottom of this hour. Before we do, I want to talk about tax returns. I know you probably don't want to hear about tax returns, but Hillary Clinton wants to hear about Donald Trump's tax returns. And we've had people inside the Trump campaign, or friends of Trump, uh, on both sides of this issue. And I want to take a look at what some of the people are saying. Of course, we had Roger Stone last Monday come out and say that he thought that Donald Trump should release his tax returns immediately. And, of course, Roger Stone uh, is an avid Trump supporter. He wishes him well. He's not criticizing him for not releasing the reports. He believes that there's nothing to see there and that it would be a gesture to people to say, look, I'm here's full disclosure. Here's my tax returns. Meanwhile, Trump's son said on Wednesday, two days later, it would be foolish for my dad to release tax returns. He said you would have a bunch of people who know nothing about taxes trying to look through and trying to come up with assumptions on things that they don't know anything about. It'd be foolish to do so. I'm actually the biggest proponent of not doing it. And they point out that uh, Hillary Clinton last summer released her tax returns from 2007 to 2015, and Tim Kaine also released 10 years of returns this month. Okay, let me explain something to you. First of all, Hillary Clinton has carefully crafted her tax returns for public consumption, okay? That's not where she hides her money. That's not how she does her dirty deals, okay? She does her dirty deals inside the Clinton Foundation as we're learning, as the AP has to take her to court, as Judicial Watch has to take her to court, as WikiLeaks has to expose her dark Machiavellian plots, okay, how she gets her money. They put out their tax returns so that they look, they look uh, squeaky clean. Understand that when you've got as complicated a tax return as Donald Trump, and I, I agree with Eric on this one, I, I think that they should not release these tax returns. I think this is nothing but a fishing expedition by Hillary Clinton uh, wanting to muddy the waters. If you go back and look at what Money Magazine used to do, I used to subscribe to Money Magazine decades ago. And uh, I've got a report that I went back and found uh, 1990, 26 years ago. This is from the Pittsburgh Press. Headline here, hard to figure. 48 of 50 experts flunk a tax return test, okay? And what they say is, ask 50 tax experts to calculate the federal taxes of a make-believe family. Now, this is a family's tax returns, not as complicated by any 
<laughs> means as the multiple businesses that Donald, Donald Trump owns. A make-believe family, and you get 50 different answers, most of them wrong. Every year, every year, Money Magazine would get a group of 30 to 50 tax accountants. They would give them a tax return that was a little bit complicated, but still it was just an individual's tax return. It wasn't even a business tax return. It wasn't a tax return that involved multiple huge businesses like Donald Trump has. Every year they would do that. Every year they would get 30 different answers or 50 different answers. All the tax accountants would give them a different answer. In this particular case, they were asked to look at a family that was making $130,000 a year. And they came up with figures that said that they owed between $9,800 and $21,000 in taxes all over the place. Now, money said they thought the correct answer was 12000 Okay, when I, I remember years we'd look at it and they would have situations where the 30 tax accountants would look at it, 30 different answers. Some of them would say, hey, you get back uh, $20,000. Others would say, you got to pay $20,000, all right? They say, although the family had some tax problems most Americans will never face, uh, some of the experts badly fumbled basic items. They say the 35 CPAs and eight independent enrolled agents and two non-CPAs and five preparers from chains like H&R Block charged fees that ranged from $271 to $4,000. And there was no logical connection between the fees charged and their performance. In other words, here's the bottom line, folks. If you want to paraphrase Joseph Stalin, who said, Bring me the man and I'll find the crime. Today, what Hillary would say is, bring me the tax returns and I'll find the crime. See, a law that is sufficiently complex is the same as having no law at all. And that's the way our tax system works. Uh, this is something that has gone on for a very long time. If you got that complicated a tax return, yeah, it, this is something that is simply going to be a fishing expedition to take attention away from the Clintons. But look at this article. Going back to May this year, we had the Washington Post say Donald Trump did once reveal his income tax returns, and they showed that he didn't pay a cent. Is that a problem? You have a problem with that? I don't have a problem with that. See, there's a difference you have to understand between tax avoidance, which is legal, and tax evasion, which is illegal. But see, you can't even get the vast majority of the American public to understand that. Because as we've seen with that viral video between uh, the young black man and the older black man, it, it, the older guy could not even understand the difference between legal and illegal immigrants. Couldn't understand it. He couldn't make that distinction. So how are people going to understand the difference between taking legal tax deductions? Why, why would you want to pay the government more, <laughs> one cent more? Why would you want to pay? I say, good for him. You know, I remember talking about Money Magazine. I remember Business Week. Uh, my dad used to get Business Week, and I would read it when I was in the college and high school. I remember a story that was in Business Week. And they were talking about what was wrong with Europe, what they called Eurosclerosis. We call it socialism. <laughs> it means that the economy is calcified and paralyzed by overregulation, which we now have in America as well. But there was something else that was in Europe. And one of the European people they were talking to said, you know, America has a different attitude. He said, if you see, if people in Europe see a really nice car parked along the side of the road, they resent it. There's an envy there. They want to key it. They want to scratch it with their key. OK, they, they really hate the person who has that. In America, he said, the difference is people look at a car like that and say, someday I'm going to have one. See, that's the difference. And when you got the Washington Post out there saying, ah, he didn't pay any taxes. It's like, I aspire to the day that I don't pay one cent in taxes, okay, and that they don't send me to jail. I do it in a way that I don't go to jail, all right? And I understand all of you who are going to write us about this, I understand that there are people who are out there trying to make the case about the tax system, the corruption that's involved there that want to opt out. I understand that. I'm not going to fight that battle. I've got other battles that I'm fighting. So, yeah, I understand that. I've read that, and other people can look at that. You understand that we operate in a system where the government doesn't really care what the law is. You can debate with them what the law is, but right now you're looking down the barrel of a gun with the IRS. They point out a disclosure, and this is back in 1981, by New Jersey gambling regulators revealed that Donald Trump had for at least two years in the late 1970s taken advantage of a tax code provision that was popular with developers that allowed him to report negative income. See, it's, it's not illegal. It was something that was in the tax code and he took advantage of it and good for him.
But see, that's a good example of how they would use this to attack him. People do, who don't understand it, people who envy what he does, his success, and just the complexity of the whole system. They could make, they could spend from here to the to uh, run out the clock, as Hillary Clinton wants to do, going over a fine tooth comb and pulling things out of context out of his tax return. I think it would be a huge mistake to do that. But let's take a look at the Clintons, okay? Here's an article from 1994, March 30th, 1994, from the Baltimore Sun. Cheer up, taxes. Boggle the Clintons, too. They confuse the Clintons as well. Again, Money Magazine looked at the Clintons' federal income tax returns from 1980 to 1992. They estimated that for those years, they believed they underpaid the IRS by $16,000. But don't worry, Clintons. <laughs> Today, that would be worth, uh, they said in, in 1994, that would be worth uh, $45,000. But don't worry, the Clintons would get away with it because of statute of limitations. They run out, they said, at that time in three years. They said, though both the Clintons are sophisticated lawyers. Boy, are they sophisticated. Yeah, they're sophisticated. Sophisticated liars, I think is what they meant to say. Uh, they didn't keep adequate records. No, really? <laughs> and this is even before they had bleach bit to get rid of uh, all their stuff. They didn't keep adequate records, the Clintons didn't. And they tended to overestimate certain deductions, like what? Like their charitable deductions, okay? They go on to say that the Clintons had a $30 value for a pair of brown shoes that the couples had written off as $80. They also knocked down long underwear from $15 to $2 when they were looking at some of their deductibles. You know, that was back when the Clintons were just petty criminals, you know, taking a deduction of $80 for their shoes when they only paid $30 for them. Now they're very sophisticated criminals, okay? And they said part of the confusion was because of Whitewater. If you don't know what Whitewater is, tonight your, your homework assignment is to go look that up. Google Whitewater. Find out what was going on with that. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Alex Jones is going to be joining us with a special report. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. This is the 268th day since Hillary Clinton has openly taken questions from the press. Looks like she's going to go through the entire campaign without doing it. When she did that, they hadn't even had the first primary, and we've gone about 80% through the campaign schedule. Looks like she's going to run the clock out on this thing without taking any live questions from the press. Don't let her get away with it. Vote her out of public office. That's what we need to do. Look, we're going to have a special report from Alex Jones about Hillary Clinton and her long background. And uh, we're going to play a uh, part of the speech that uh, Nigel Farage gave at the Trump rally. Interesting speech, too, because as he uh, talked about the experience and the aftermath of that uh, in the Daily Mail, he said a very rattled and anxious looking Hillary Clinton responded to what he said and attacked my presence on the stage with Trump. She trotted out a series of willful misrepresentations of things that I had said. No, really? Hillary Clinton trotted out a willful misrepresentation of what he had said. <laughs> that is her M.O. That's what she did with uh, Alex Jones as well. And you know what? Uh, draw attention. Yeah, that's good, Hillary. Draw attention to Nigel Farage. Draw attention to Alex Jones. Um, and if we were a brow rabbit, we'd say, uh, don't throw us in that brow patch. <laughs> I guess that's going to work out really good. She has just pointed out in the last couple of days two of the most powerful speakers who will directly uh, attack Hillary Clinton and tell you exactly what this woman is about. So we're going to play that uh, for you in just a moment. Before we do, real quickly, I want to let you know about our new product, BioTrue Selenium. And, of course, uh, this is the essential trace mineral that we all need, but in a very, uh, a very clean form. It's 100% organic mustard seeds that they press this out of. So you don't have to worry about any residuals of heavy metals or anything like that. And as a matter of fact, you get some good cofactors out of that organic mustard seed that they press this out of. It's a high-quality source that plays a role in the natural function of your reproduction, reproductive health, your DNA production, and even your eyesight. Uh, selenium is an essential trace mineral that you need to make sure that you have uh, in your uh, particular supplementation as well as your family's supplementation. Again, that's the new form BioTrue Selenium that we're now offering at InfoWarsLife.com. Let's go to this speech from Nigel Farage. Nobody, I think, uh, contemporary speaks like Nigel, Nigel Farage as well as uh, debates like Nigel. Uh, let's play the speech that he gave at a Trump rally in Mississippi. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Good evening, Mississippi. I 
come to you from the United Kingdom with a message of hope and a message of optimism. It's a message that says if the little people, if the real people, if the ordinary decent people are prepared to stand up and fight for what they believe in, we can overcome the big banks. We can overcome the multinationals. And we did it. We made, we made June the 23rd our Independence Day when we smashed the establishment. And we did it. Everybody said we'd lose. And what did we see? We saw experts from all over the world. We saw the International Monetary Fund. We saw Moody's. We saw Standard & Poor's. We saw global leaders giving us Project Fear telling us that if we voted not to be run by a bunch of unelected old men in Brussels yeah well it's okay they don't like me either so it doesn't really matter does it but they told us our economy would fall off a cliff they told us there'd be mass unemployment. They told us investment would leave our country. And David Cameron, then our Prime Minister, but no longer, told us we might even get World War III. And we saw the commentariat, and we saw the polling industry doing everything they could to demoralise our campaign. On the day of the vote itself, that morning, they put us 10 points behind. And actually, they were all wrong. And they were wrong because what the Brexit campaign did is we reached those people who've been let down by modern global corporatism. We reached those people. We reach those people who have never voted in their lives but believe by going out and voting for Brexit they could take back control of their country, take back control of their borders and get back their pride and self-respect. Now the big card the big card the Prime Minister decided to play in the referendum is he got a foreign visitor to come to London to talk to us. Yes, we were visited by one Barack Obama. And he talked down to us. He treated us as if we were nothing. One of the oldest functioning democracies in the world. And here he was telling us to vote Remain. So I, having criticised, having criticised and condemned his behaviour, I could not possibly tell you how you should vote in this election. But, but... You know, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm hearing you. Uh, but I will say this. If I was an American citizen, I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton if you paid me. <laughs> Barrage is such a great speaker. <laughs> In fact, I wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton if she paid me. <laughs> The message is clear, the parallels are there, there are millions of ordinary Americans who've been let down, who've had a bad time, yeah. who feel the political class right. in Washington are detached from them, who feel so many of their representatives are politically correct parts of that liberal media elite. They feel people aren't standing up for them and they've actually in many cases given up on the whole electoral process and I think, I think that you have a fantastic opportunity here with this campaign you can go out you can beat the pollsters you can beat the commentators you can beat Washington and you'll do it 
by doing what we did for Brexit in Britain. We had our own people's army of ordinary citizens who went out and delivered leaflets, who went to meet people where they worked and where they socialised, who convinced and inspired people to go out if this was the one and only time in their life and to vote for change. So my advice to you. If you want change in this country, you better get your walking And again, that's on. Nigel Farage. It's an amazing out. speech, and what he said was the atmosphere was more like a rock concert. He said he's used to going to talk to about 50 people. You know, so is Hillary Clinton, except those 50 people give her a $100,000 check. Stay with us. We're going to be right back with Alex Jones. We're going to play a special report from Alex Jones here. You know, this last week, Hillary Clinton called him out by name. It's kind of like the Eye of Sauron focusing on you and it's something we ought to take seriously there's a long list of arkansas as, as, as a matter of fact when we had the hillary when we had the uh, monica Lewinsky scandal back in 1998 the day that was released by the house of representatives bill started a bombing campaign and it ended only after they came up with the articles of impeachment if they will bomb an entire country to cover up their crimes what will they do to just one person that's the question Alex Jones talks about. Here's Alex. Before the Clintons left their governorship in Arkansas, more than 100 people had been suspiciously murdered. Hundreds more died during their first terms. And the scourge continues to this day. DNC staffer after DNC staffer that speaks out against election fraud or leaks information to WikiLeaks ends up gunned down. And the Clinton crime family and their backers is now in the spotlight. If I die, if they kill me, it was done for a worthy cause. Somebody's got to stand up against these people. Long before George W. Bush had taken office, or Senator Obama was even thinking about being president, I was there exposing the crimes of the Clintons. So it is fitting that I... Alex Jones, called the dark heart by Hillary Clinton, would be your chronicler. A chronicler who risked his very life exposing these evil ones. It's required by Bill Clinton in 1992, and it was instituted here in Texas in 1993. I know the code, sir. Are you going to institute his urine and blood testing when he commands you? Are you going to stick a needle in my arm when I have no criminal record? It's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones who claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. Just a few days ago, Hillary Clinton, one of the most powerful criminal kingpins in history, came out on national television and said that I had a horrible dark heart. I don't know what happens in somebody's mind or how dark their heart must be. I am committed to standing up against oppression and tyranny. That's just who I am. But I've got to be honest with you. I thought back to the history of the Clintons' reign of criminal terror in the last 20 plus years on this planet. And I have to tell you, it's surreal to realize that Alex Jones, little old me, is one of the main opposition points against these monsters. It's also what happens when you listen to the radio host, Alex Jones, who claims that 9-11 and the Oklahoma City bombings were inside jobs. Hillary Clinton is famous for her death threats, both public and private. Back in 2008, even the New York Times had the headline, Clinton's remark on Kennedy's killing stirs uproar. When Obama was way ahead of her in the primary polls, she said it doesn't matter because Bobby got assassinated before the primary ended. Now, my husband did not wrap up the nomination in 1992 until he won the California primary um, somewhere in the middle of June, June, right? We all remember Bobby Kennedy was assassinated in June in California. This is the type of bloodthirsty rhetoric that we continually see from Hillary Clinton. Years later, after she had successfully conned the world into bombing Libya to give Al-Qaeda air cover, Hillary, after landing in Tripoli, bragged that she came, she saw, and Gaddafi died. Yes, we came, 
We saw he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, I'm, I'm sure it did. I want to go back to the beginning. Governor Bill Clinton and his co-governor wife supported George Herbert Walker Bush in the 1991 war in Iraq. But from there, it only got worse. Once they were in the White House, they expanded the bombing to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of attacks a year on the infrastructure of Iraq. They got the UN to pass the most draconian sanctions ever in modern history where medicine and food and all forms of technology were basically blocked from coming into the country. Over a million and a half Iraqis starved to death and died. And Hillary Clinton's mentor, Madeleine Albright, bragged on 60 Minutes and other channels that 500,000 dead Iraqi children were a good price to pay of the sanctions. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. The population implodes. Refugees flee across the world. A once pro-Western secular Muslim nation had begun its path to being taken over by jihadis, which Hillary, a decade plus later, would facilitate in happening. I mean, let's remember here, the people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. Let's go back again to 1995 and 1999. You have the Croats, you have the Serbs, you have the Muslims of the South in Albania, you have the Balkans. The Russians have pulled out after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991. The Clintons back Islamicists out of Albania and Croats, this is on record, to attack Serbia. When Serbia fights back, even though they lost twice as many people, the Clintons launch giant bombing raids and NATO invasions that blow up power plants, water treatment plants, TV stations with depleted uranium bombs radiating the entire area. Then they had British television broadcast images of what's admitted now to be fake Serb concentration camps. The Clintons are the most hated couple in Serbia and the Balkans because the Serbs were the most powerful allies of America and Madeleine Albright the Secretary of State who ran this whole operation that bragged about 500,000 kids is no big deal her father and her were saved from the Nazis by the Serbs a lot of you younger women don't think you have to it's been done it's not done and you have to help Hillary Clinton will always be there for you and just remember there's a special place in hell for women who don't help each other but when you are a Machiavellian sociopath or a sadistic psychopath like George Soros Hillary Clinton Bill Clinton and others you don't look at things about alliances and who's right and who's wrong you look at a billion plus Muslims and you look at Syria and you look at the invasion points where you can come into all of Europe and take over. But first you've got to get the weapons to invade. And you see Libya and Muammar Gaddafi, who for eight years previous to the Western attack had invested in the West, brought the West in and decided to go the route of detente. He was set up, jihadists out of Saudi Arabia, via the State Department and Hillary, this is all mainstream news now, were brought into Benghazi. They attacked the country. The West had a bombing campaign to back the takeover. Islamists were put in control. Christians, blacks, non-radical Muslims, Shiites and others were killed by the tens of thousands. And Hillary formed, by design, a failed state. We came... We saw, he died. <laughs> you look at the before and after images, it is simply incredible. And Hillary admits it's a failed state. They took the weapons, the Stinger missiles, the tow missiles, and moved them to Syria to knock down the gates to Europe. You take over Syria, 
You can bring in all the jihadis out of Saudi Arabia and other areas, invade Europe, then use the Islamic threat to ban free speech of those that criticize it, and use the civil emergency to bring in a permanent form of martial law. To be fair to Hillary Clinton, she's only a puppet of George Soros, who even the Jerusalem Post has recently reported, due to the WikiLeaks documents, is nothing but a megalomaniac who thinks he's the Messiah, establishing world government through chaos he sows. First on Ukraine, one of the things that many people recognized about you was that you, during the revolutions of 1989, funded a lot of dissident activity, civil society groups in Eastern Europe, in Poland, the Czech Republic. Are you doing similar things in Ukraine? Well, I set up a foundation in Ukraine before Ukraine became independent of uh, Russia. Um, and the foundation has been uh, functioning ever since. And it played a, an important part in events now. Do you? It would take hours to chronicle the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that have been mysteriously murdered, gunned down, choked to death, drowned, cut into pieces since the Clintons were running for governor right through president, right through the State Department to today. But just since Bernie Sanders openly had the nomination stolen from him a few months ago, we've seen at least four top staffers over email over servers, over all the key information, being gunned down, being killed, being murdered. And WikiLeaks has come out and said, we don't reveal sources, but this is an alleged source, and we have put on a $20,000 reward. This is getting really, really out of control. The stuff that you're sitting on, is, is an October surprise in there? We Do you even know the... what you're sitting on? WikiLeaks never sits on material. Uh, our whistleblowers go to significant efforts to get us material and often very significant risks. As a 27-year-old uh, works for the DNC, who was shot in the back, murdered uh, just two weeks ago uh, for un unknown reasons as he was walking down the street in Washington. So that was, that was just a robbery, I believe, wasn't it? No, it's, there's no finding. So uh, that's what are you the suggesting? Sort of, what are you suggesting? What, I'm suggesting that our sources uh, take risks and they, are, they become concerned uh, to see things occurring uh, like that. But was he one uh, of your sources then? I mean... We don't comment on who our sources but are. Why but why make the suggestion about a young guy being shot in the streets of Washington? Because uh, we have to understand uh, how high the stakes are. Google has been caught, so have Facebook, Twitter, you name it, censoring anti-news stories about the Clintons, including the Clinton death count. We are seeing what the technocracy is able to do. We are seeing them openly engage in mass censorship. What difference at this point does it make? In closing, I want to reach out to you with a personal appeal, a free human to other free humans of every race, color, and creed who have the spirit of liberty beating in your breast. I don't want to confront a kingpin that's killed millions of people around the world and who thinks it's funny. I don't want to take on this vampire. I don't want to fight this monster as an individual. But as a man, my spirit directs me, commands me to take action. I don't have any other choice. And I want to be victorious and successful in this quest. Evil historically takes over and is unstoppable as long as good men and women do nothing. But as Thomas Jefferson famously said, our third president, when we take action, nothing on earth can stop us. That's why tyrants are so scared of good men and women who actually have good will and want you to have free will, and who want universal law to reign on this planet. We're facing cancer. That's what Hillary Clinton represents, evil. She represents chaos. She represents lawlessness. She represents disease and failure. Her physical manifestation is a rotting, reanimated corpse. I'm not scared of Hillary Clinton. 
But I am scared of failing in this mission. So I ask you all to redouble your efforts to expose the New World Order. And I ask you all for your prayers. And I reach out to Hillary Clinton as well. Because I don't even personally hate her. I hate the spirit that has taken over her body, her mind, and her soul. There's still time for you to turn back, Hillary. You talk about my dark heart and then misrepresent what I've said. I have a heart of incredible love. I care deeply for people. And I even care for what's left of you. You wouldn't have said the things you said on that podium unless there wasn't some shred of humanity left in you. There's still time for you and others to turn back. But I want to be very, very clear. I have chosen the path I'm on, and I am willfully challenging you and everything that you represent. And I'm asking the population of this planet and those that love liberty to support us and to pray for us. And I'm telling you and your masters that I'm only one symbol of freedom, one manifestation, and that nothing on earth will stop the movement that you now see. It's time for Hillary Clinton to repent. It's time for Hillary Clinton to stop the murder, to stop the killing, to stop licking her lips like Madeleine Albright and herself when they talk about all the dead kids. I look at how you put in jihadis and al-Qaeda into Libya and into Syria to kill hundreds of thousands of Christians, and Obama won't let the Christians get out, but lets the Sunnis that engage in the crime escape. And I just thank God I'm not on your team. So whatever you do to me, that's between you and God. But I've made my choice, and I am not with you. I will never commit suicide, and if I am killed, the criminals that represent Hillary Rodham Clinton are the main suspects. You may have the old, rotten, discredited mainstream media that the AP says has a 6% trust rate with the public backing you, Hillary. But I've got common sense and the will of the people behind me. And I'm committed to a cause. And in history, and in this universe, nothing on earth can stand up against that. No matter what happens to this body, ideas and movements backed by truth and liberty are invincible. They are bulletproof. This is the heart of 1776. And again, that's Alex Jones, and we've got the docs to prove that they created war and chaos in Libya. Thanks to WikiLeaks, thanks to Judicial Watch, we now have the documentation as to why they did it. They did it for the central banks. And they'll go to war to cover up for their own scandals. We saw this happening, as I mentioned earlier. Even Huma Abedin's publication admitted that in 1998, Operation Desert Fox was done as began bombing Iraq as the House of Representatives filed a report accusing the president of high crimes and misdemeanors. And it did not end until they came up with the indictment, with the impeachment. Once that happened, it's like, all right, we don't have to keep bombing them anymore. So they stopped raining death down on people just to cover up his sexual predator crimes, his uh, committing perjury under oath. And, of course, in 1996, they did it, same thing, went into uh, Iraq, bombed people there. Why? To cover up for a finance scandal. You know, earlier this week, uh, we put up a video. I talked to Roger Stone. We had Vince Foster goes missing again. We got an article and video. In that, we talked about what Sandy Berger did, very much like what Hillary Clinton has done with these emails. It's now come out that they deliberately destroyed these things, didn't accidentally erase them. They deliberately destroyed them. Why? She was given special privileges, just like Sandy Berger was given special privileges in the National Archives to delete uh, documents there that they thought would be damaging to the Clintons. The people who control that said, we made a mistake. We gave them special access and they abused it. What did he do? He said, I made an honest mistake when he was stuffing these documents in his clothes, took them out, cut them up with scissors, he later admitted, did it four different times and he called it an honest mistake. Who gave him a pass? It was FBI Director Comey when he was investigating that. Join us again tomorrow at 11 Central for the Alex Jones Radio Show. Alex Jones will be back. I'm David Knight.